Okay. So we just saved Akira from being poisoned to death by a snake. In a very, like, drawn-out way, by the way. We had to, like, go to several places. Um, or really only, like, what? Only two places, technically? But we just kept going back and forth to the same place, you know? Until finally, we were able to save her. Um, with, like, a coincidence. I guess it was, like, foreshadowed a little bit, maybe? I don't know. It's still a bit of a... I don't know, it's still a bit of a, what do you call it, an ass pole, you know, where technically the main character was poisoned by this very same snake before, and you can actually use it as, he uses blood as an antidote or something, I don't know, but whatever, doesn't matter. Either way, we save Akira, maybe now she'll, op she'll open up to us uh, uh, more openly, I guess. Well, anyway, I'm still a bit shaky, so I'm leaning, I'm leaning against the wall, I hope you don't mind. Of course, that's okay. You want to know more about this island, right? You know, after this light-threatening situation. Now, not, now I'm taking things seriously. Alright, I'll tell you everything I know. Are you sure? You might be targeted again by the people from the mansion. I won't be threatened in silence anymore. Besides, I owe you my life, don't I? Listen, just accept this favor before I change my mind. Alright then, tell me what you know. Okay. What is the secret of Shiranaka's Island? What's the secret? You know, what's the secret? To put it simply, there was an illegal prostitution happening. Uh, there was a legal prostitution happening on Shiranaka's Island. Of course. Of course. With a bunch of rich people going to a like remote island, of course there's illegal prostitution and human trafficking. It's just how it is, right? Prostitution. On the solitary island in the middle of nowhere. That's rather unusual. What made it illegal? Were there, were there minors involved? That's right. Not only with child prostitution, but human trafficking as well. Of course! I mean, this didn't this happen in real life? I think this happened in real life. I don't know the details, but this happened in real life. <laughs> so, it's not a surprise. I heard that many terrible things happen here. Such as? The girls who came here was given colored ribbons. The colors indicated how they could be treated. The colors were red, yellow, and blue. Hmm, ribbons, you say. Anyone wearing ribbons? You're wearing a ribbon, but I don't know if you count. Girls with red ribbons were allowed to be killed with impunity. Oh. You can just do that? Many girls with red ribbons were killed in this mansion by sadistic men. Good grief. How terrible. I have a few questions. Never mind that, though. I have more questions. <laughs> if illegal prostitution was really taking place here. Where did all the girls disappear to? Who knows? I guess someone spilled the beans so they went out of business. They might have taken the girls away or even hidden them somewhere. I wonder if that's what happened to them. I have a bad feeling about this. Hmm. So the traitor is actually a good guy, maybe. You know, they, they actually try to save all the girls. Hopefully? <laughs> you know, hopefully. Come to think of it, Jacob told me that there were fewer people than usual in the mansion. Maybe he was talking about the girls. I wonder where they are. There don't appear to be many... Uh, there don't to be... Bleh, I can't speak. There don't appear to be any hiding places on this island. Maybe there's a secret cave somewhere. A secret cave, huh? But why do you know all this? This isn't something you can easily discover. Did you hear about it from your father? Stop bringing that man up. A friend of his told me. I think he was drunk at the time, and he was very talkative. He kept going on about horrible acts, as if he was enjoying my reactions. And there are all kinds of scumbags in this world. He might have really enjoyed watching your reactions. Like watching, like, I don't know, reaction videos on YouTube, I don't know. Anyway, I knew what he was trying to achieve, so I pretended to be unresponsive as I could. I really wanted to throw up, however. He told me about some terrible torture someone had carried out, but he might have done it himself. He just knew too many details about it. Could you tell me more about his background? Sure, but I don't think it'd be helpful. He was the second son of an ancient aristocratic family and a wealthy businessman, the CEO of his own company. His, talkative, uh, his talkativeness was probably his downfall. He disappeared on this very island. He disappeared on this island? I don't know all the details, but one day he suddenly went crazy and disappeared. I think he was probably liquidated. 
liquidate him. As in, like, you had to go bankrupt or, you know, you liquidate all your assets? Or do you mean literally he turned into a liquid? In the eyes of the mansion, he was a traitor. Could this be the man Jacob mentioned? I see. It's no surprise that he was liquidated. A very, very specific term, by the way. However, this man was no commoner. This means these people are willing to kill anyone. Prostitution, torture, are those the only secrets of this island? Do you think there, there is something else? I can't even imagine what it could be. In any case, this is all I've heard. It should be relatively easy to keep those secrets on this isolated island. I just can't understand why they would build all of these buildings here. Really? That's a good enough reason if you ask me. In business as well as in life, you don't get something for nothing. I don't know how much money prostitution and human trafficking made them, but they took considerable risks for it. If they were exposed, they would all be arrested. Well, you know, just because someone has a lot of money doesn't mean they're particularly moral, you know? So they, they're they just doing it for kicks. I don't know. You ever watch Squid Game? <laughs> you know, whatever. Uh, anyway. Besides, uh, Sir Raymond was not someone who struggled financially. Something about this just doesn't feel right. There's definitely something more going on here. Any more secrets? I almost forgot about this. Akira, have you ever seen this IC card before? A card? Quarantine level 2. What a strange card. I think I've seen something similar, but it was a different color. I believe it was a red card. Red. Neko, could you give me the other card? Yeah, do I really have to? Uh... Neko reluctantly takes out the card, wrapped in the bundle of tissues. That's it. This is like the one I saw. Or, oh no, that's Akira saying that. I always get mixed up. That's it. This is like the one I saw. I saw that man holding the exact same card. Why is it covered in the suit? Oh, this was Thomas's card. Do you know where and how I can use it? No idea. I'd like to know myself. You can probably use this card to enter some kind of quarantine zone. I don't know where that could be, though. Quarantine zone, huh? Hmm, I wonder where it is. Well, I don't really want to see it, though. Well, here's the other dialogue option. Uh, why'd you come to the island? Come on, Akira. You promised you would tell me what I need to know. Why did you come to this island? Okay, fine. I'll tell you. Akira sighs deeply and begins to talk. I wanted to see this place for myself. My father is a cold-blooded, merciless man who never shed a tear. But he isn't the kind of man who would use the services of prostitutes. However, they say that everyone has more than one side, so you can never know for sure. That's why I had to see this place with my own eyes. And to see if there was something else here. You might forgive your father. Is that what you're thinking? I would never forgive that man for what he did to my mother. Even when she was about to pass away, the only thing he cared about was work. He rarely showed his face at the hospital because he was too busy with stupid work. Hmm. Well, sounds like a bit. No, I mean, that, that sounds like a typical, you know, or like a father who works too hard, doesn't pay attention, you know, to his family kind of thing. Very common in Japan. Te well, technically, I think Akira is, is Scottish, so it's not. She's not from Japan, but obviously, this game is definitely influenced by Japanese culture, and considering the developer, you know, is Japanese. So it's probably something like that where, like, yeah. It's like, it's, it's a very common thing where, like, um,. Yeah, you know, the, the the father will be the main the, the breadwinner or whatever, and they would just work, 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 and never pay attention and, and neglect their own family. I mean, especially in, in work culture in Japan, at least traditional work culture. It's not like this everywhere in Japan, but it's common where you would have to, like, stay after work, right? You would, like, stay after work, you would, like, drink with your co-workers and your boss or whatever, and you would just do that ad nauseum forever, I guess. Because your work is life, you know, life is work. Uh, but whatever, anyway. Maybe I just needed a reason to truly hate him. So then, though that when I finally knew the truth, I could curse him without hesitation. I couldn't stand the fact that he's hiding something from me. That's all. I told you everything I know. I only heard about the island from someone else. I don't know what's really going on here. This is more than sufficient. Thank you for your help, Akira. Hmm. Something is definitely fishy here, and it's not the demon of Shiro Nakazu Island who is half fish. It seems I really have to watch my back around the servants from now on. 
Was Thomas killed by someone from the mansion? Is Sir Raymond the mastermind behind all of this? No. Something just doesn't add up. At any rate, there's no turning back. I'll do as just I'll just do as much as I can. So we're done, right? This is all I can do to help anyway. <clears> hmm. <throat> excuse. Promise me that you'll take care of the situation and protect us. I can't guarantee anything, but I'll do my best. So I can't rely on you at all, can I? Oh well. By the way, Nanako. Yeah. I thought you were trying to hide your ugly face behind that long hair, but I was mistaken. You're actually quite cute because you're like the mascot of this entire game, so obviously you're drawn to be a super bishi and everything, despite your negative characteristics of being like socially awkward and everything, and and like a bit like she, I, mean, I don't know, she's she does this thing where she's a bit snarky as well, you know, but it just comes across as like. I mean, to be honest, pathetic, <laughs> but like, it's, I don't know, I think it's meant to be like that, right? It's, you see, she's supposed to be not really all that threatening, is the whole point. Anyway. But you're a little bit smelly. Oh, <laughs> yes, you're smelly? You need to take a bath. When was the last time you had a bath? Even with beautiful, uh, beautiful hair and a pretty face, a bad smell would ruin everything. Come to my room later. I'll show you how to become a proper lady. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It looks like Nediko is trying to decline Akira's offer, but she stutters so much that no one can understand what she's saying. Well, she does smell a bit. Plus, it might be good to let Akira give her a hint of femininity, as she doesn't appear to have any to begin with. I mean, that's just a lie. They always do that. I don't Again, maybe it's like a translation thing, but like... I always feel like that always happens in, in anime. Where it's like, look at this anime girl. She's not a girl at all. And then I look at her and she's clearly drawn in the way to market the fact that she's an anime girl. So I don't, I don't understand what we're talking about. As I'm thinking that, we leave the communication room after many twists and turns. Like she's obviously not drawn to be ugly, right? And yet everybody calls her ugly. You know, I feel like that always, ha always happens in, in anime. But like, I don't know. That's just a thing, I guess. It's just, you know, it's, it's to gain sympathy or whatever. It's like, oh no, she has no friends. Those are, therefore, you're sympathetic with her and everything. I, I, I kind of, I don't know, that kind of that kind of character archetype. I don't, I don't hate the character, but the character archetype, you know, I don't like. Um, you know, a character archetype that, that works, though, would be, again, I, I mentioned how she reminds me of the main character of Watamote. Now, that works because... Her actual, like, her negative characteristics actually have consequences, you know, where she actually does act in a way where, where people, you know, re realistically would be annoyed by her, right? But, anyway. Uh, sorry I kept you waiting, Giselle. We're all done. You know, sorry for, like, almost dying from uh, being killed by a snake. I'm terribly, uh, terribly sorry for my mistake, young lady. If I hadn't left my post at the door, this wouldn't have happened. Don't worry about it. I'm still alive, but be careful next time. The killer is still out there. Ouch. Uh, are you alright, young lady? Please, lean on my shoulder. No need, Giselle. I can walk by myself. Goodbye, Mr. Detective. I'll see you later, Nanako. Despite the pain in her leg, Akira still tries to walk to the guest room building, hunched over with a strange gait. <laughs> ah, what the heck? Don't surprise me like that. What's with a sudden scream? M my chastity is in danger, okay? I didn't know you swung that way, Nanako. Akira is going to violate me. Oh, you were thinking about Akira. Don't worry, she's gonna just douse you with perfume, bring out your cute and fluffy side. That would make me want to die. My nerves are not strong enough for that. Cause I'm just a total lesbian. I'm mean, what? Oh, really? Well, good luck in trying to enjoy yourself. Help me, Akira, or Ikeda, Ikeda. I keep, I keep saying that wrong. Ikeda, Ikeda, Ikeda. E is E, you know, because when you pronounce Japanese. Uh, certain words in Japanese is always pronounced in a, a very specific way. There's no ambiguity or ambiguity. Am, see, am, ambiguity in uh, Japanese pronunciation. Uh, ikeda, ikeda. Uh, you're my partner, aren't you? Help me! I don't want to die. I drag Nanako, who's clinging to me, to the guest room building. Good. Oh. If it isn't Mr. Uh, ikeda, you did a great job back there, huh? Nanako, what's going on? You look so pale. Well, uh, I don't mind her. What are you two doing here? Well, I noticed a strange smell coming from this empty room. A strange smell? From this room, huh? 
I lean toward the door of room 105, situated at the far right, and take a whiff. Although it is an old door, it's almost airtight, so it should contain most smells. However, when I press my nose against the keyhole, I can smell a strong stench wafting toward me. It smells really bad. It smells like blood and rotten meat. What should we do? Should we tell the match staff to open it? We can't trust them anymore. Besides, Giselle also said that she couldn't find any of them. It's okay, I can pick locks like this one in my sleep. You know, I played Fallout and uh, Skyrim many a times. I just need, I just need to do the mini game. you know, just like <laughs> wiggle it a little bit. That's how it works, right? This door has a warded lock, just like all the other doors in this building. The security awareness of this place is rather low, but it's not so surprising considering that we're in the middle of the ocean. I begin to pick the door with my trusty lockpick. The water locks are not very complex. All you have to do is rotate the lockpick while avoiding the obstacles on the inside. It takes me less than 30 seconds to pick the lock, just like my video games, I guess. Even though real life, I don't think in real life is that easy. I mean, it depends on the lock, I guess, but uh, generally speaking, it doesn't take, you know, that quickly to do that, you know. It still takes a bit. Oh, that didn't take you long at all. Call me impressed. You make a great thief. Indeed. You haven't been using that skill for nefarious deeds, have you? Can you stop mocking me already? At least show me some gratitude. I try to ignore them and open the door. Alright, well, it's a body. Who lived in 105 again? Or, well, not live, but like, was uh, staying at 105 anyway? Hmm. I mean, I, I don't remember, but I guess if you were paying attention, then you probably know, right? As soon as the door opens, we were hit by a foul odor of putrid blood and rotten meat. I mean, we just think about, like, who's not here, you know? We've just seen Akira and Giselle. Uh, Neneko's with us. And we see Alex and, um, Rio. So anyone who's left... Well, I guess we'll see. But as soon as the door opens, we're hit by foul odor of putrid blood and rotten meat. Words cannot describe how awful fecal odors are, yeah? Yeah. Those people die, you know? Uh, you smell... You smell the poop. The strong smell makes everyone in the room hold their noses at the same time. Ugh, what a terrible smell. The room is so dark I can't see a thing. The switch doesn't work. There doesn't appear to be any electricity. This is eerie, but we must find out what's going on in here. Obviously there's this thing right here, but I mean... Let's look around. This eye of the dead painting on the wall. It's a nice painting, I like the room itself. Weak light barely shines through the windows. Well, the outside is rough as always. You can barely see anything in this dimly lit room. Yeah, it's always interesting. So, hmm. What was it saying? Like, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, I guess? So the rooms are kind of are facing the west, or...? I don't know, because the rooms are from both sides, right? So I'm just wondering, because uh, in our room as well, it was also dimly lit when it was day. So I wonder if that's important to, to know, but... Like, it seems like the sun is not shining in our direction, right? Which is strange. I mean, I don't know. Anyway. I mean, maybe not so strange. I mean, it depends on what position the house was built in, right? How, how the windows are facing, but... Anyway, whatever. Uh, there's nothing unusual about this mirror. Looks like the light bulb has been removed from the lamp. It appears it was done on purpose. I wonder why. There's a Lewis Associate guidebook and a notepad. Just looking at the rooms, nothing unusual. I signal rail to back off and open the bathroom door. It's all right. There's nobody in here. Everybody behind me breathes a sigh of relief. I mean, obviously there's a bloody body right here, but I'm just looking around first just to see. Something unusual about the sofa. Nothing special about that. Something unusual about the phone. No wait, there are some small blood stains on it, but nothing else. Something unusual about the lamps. All right, I'll, I'll click on the bed. The bed sheet is soaked in blood. There appears to be something underneath it. I should be careful. I should look elsewhere for now, okay. They always do the same, you know. I mean, in a way, it's not so bad because it actually does force you to explore all the dialogue options, which I usually like to do, actually. I don't like to um, progress too fast and then skip some stuff. Um, but yeah, it's funny how, like, you can't actually click on the obvious thing until you do everything else. That's just, this, that's just like a theme in this game. Not a theme, but... You know, like a design thing in this game. Uh, strong wind shaking the windows. I mean, there's this thing as well. What's this? What's this thing on the wall? Um, it looks like... It appears to be human skin. Or more specifically, facial skin. Uh, excuse me for a moment. 
Alex runs out of the room with a pale face. It would actually be better if everyone went outside so that I can preserve this crime scene. I'm feeling a little bit nauseous as well. Would you mind if I left? Hey, save me, Real. You're the only doctor in this on this island. I already told you this, but I'm a physician. You have the psych. Uh, you have this dissected the body before, haven't you? Yes, I have. But dissecting a slaughter corpse is a different story. Wait, have I ever dissected a, dissected a slaughter corpse before? I don't think I have. Uh, no, I, I haven't. You're okay. Just thinking about that. Well, you're the only person here capable of do uh, capable of doing this. Hey, Nanako. One zero 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 nine one zero zero three seven. Isn't that like? I feel like that's. <laughs> oh, that reminds me of Danga Ropa. But anyway, uh, one zero zero three nine one zero six one. Then it goes mumbling and talking to herself, probably to escape from this horrible reality. I'm not exactly sure what she's counting though. Rhyme numbers? Hey, I don't mind you counting numbers, but at least take a look around the room. Uh, Ikita, that wasn't a nice thing to say. Why are you forcing Nanako to see this? Um, she may look stupid, but she's actually a genius of photographic memory. Their abilities can be very helpful at times. Wow, no wonder she knows so much about everything. But as a doctor, I can't really recommend letting a young girl see this. She might become traumatized. Well, it's not like I have a choice. She'll just have to hang in there. Good grief. Maybe you're right. Oh, what can I say? I, I don't know what to say other than hang in there, Nanako. One, two, three, two, three, twelve, three, ten, twenty nine, blah, 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 Okay. I don't think this was an accident. Someone must have peeled this person's skin off. I wonder if whoever did this is the same person who killed Thom uh, Thomas. I said, I said Thomas? Thomas? No, Thomas. We don't know yet. However, our most pressing issue is identifying this corpse. You're right. But we were all together until recently. I don't think that anyone had disappeared. So who is this? No, there's one person who is missing. Are you suggesting that? Well, we'll probably know for sure when we pull this sheet back. Let's pull the sheet back, Riel. Alright. I'm not scared, I'm fine. Let's do this. You. Oh boy. What a horrible spectacle. Hey, Neniko. Ah, don't make me look at it. No, oh, don't make me. Please leave me alone. Don't worry, I won't force you to. This time. Go back to your room and be quiet. Oh, uh, thank you. Neniko runs out of the room as fast as her feet can carry her, crying her eyes out. I think you made the right decision by letting her leave. Neniko would be scarred for life if she saw this corpse. I'm not a total merciless jerk, uh, jerk, you know, just a little bit. In fact, actually, well, a lot, actually, but, you know, not a total merciless jerk. No mercy for me, then. Or are you just trying to rattle my cage? I'll make it up to you somehow. I'm looking forward to that, Ikeda. Let's begin the post-mortem. Riel puts on her uh, vinyl gloves and begins to examine the condition of the corpse. Oh, she just, she just has those, no? I mean, she doesn't have her, like, anti-snake... Uh, Venom kit with her, but she does bring her, I guess, why no gloves with her everywhere she goes. I guess. Hmm. Do you not get to see it? <laughs> we just see her touching the corpse. We don't actually see her ourselves. Uh, there are facial skin defects, binocular defects, and orbicular muscle defects on both eyes, seemingly caused by a sharp object. The nasal cart uh, cartilage and urica are also damaged. And part of the nasal bone is exposed. Hmm. I mean, basically, yeah. The eyes... I mean, the face in general has been mutilated, basically. Many stab wounds are found on the, on the orbicularis oculi. Gingiva, teeth, hard palate, and tongue. I've seen these kinds of wounds on mouths before. They're similar to the wounds made by mercenaries and mafia during torture. They do this by sticking a knife into the mouth and then digging out the teeth. I really did not want to know about that, but... You might be right. Judging from the bleeding and wound conditions, these cuts were likely inflicted while the victim was still alive. His skin was peeled off and he was tortured alive. I can't even fathom that. Whoever did this might have had quite a grudge against this person. The cut on the tongue is relatively shallow. This was done... This was probably done intentionally to avoid dying from suffocation and blood loss. The torturer wanted him to suffer as much as possible by keeping him alive. I've seen a lot of dead bodies before, but this is the most horrible one of them all. 
makes me want to avert my eyes in disgust. So what do you think? Do you know who this is? His face has been deformed beyond recognition. We should look at the rest of the body. My thoughts exactly. I'll move on to the chest. Ryo gradually removes the sheath further, revealing the body's chest and abdomen. A deep cut that continues all the way down to the abdomen is visible in the center of the torso. Some of the victim's intestines can be seen protruding from the cavity in the abdomen. A strong, rotting smell permeates the air. The awful smell that fills the room appears to come from the abdomen. Although the clothes are badly damaged and bloodstained, I can see that they once was a or they once were a black tuxedo and a white shirt. There's a deep cut that runs from the chest to the abdomen. The chest is much more deeply cut, however, similar to the median's uh, sterno sternotomy. Sternotomy? Sternotomy? There are also several cut marks between the breastbone and the costal cartilage. Um, what's wrong? The heart is missing. It appears to have been removed. The heart. Rail. From a medical point of view, how hard is it to remove someone's heart? Honestly, it would be a lot of work. To remove it, it will, you would have to cut through the breastbone and the ribs, or to fix them in place, and then disconnect and remove all the blood vessels connected to the heart. You know, I played uh, a surgeon simulator before, you know, I know what you're talking about. You know, you just gotta like wiggle your hands in there and just grab it, and then just break all the other bones. That's all easy. Um, the heart is a vital organ. It can't be damaged easily. I didn't know that. I thought it was only a biological pump. The next time I see a heart, I'll give it my proper respects. However, because it takes a lot of effort to remove a heart, I don't think that this is just a simple grudge. What happens to the other missing body parts is also a mystery. The only strip part left in this room is the victim's peeled off facial skin. Where could the heart be? Were they thrown out the window, perhaps? It is possible, but why would the person who did this want to throw them away? Maybe they were a psychopath. Who knows what they're thinking? Huh? There's something inside the chest cavity. Um, Rio stains her face, uh, strains her face, and pushes her hand to the open chest. She removes a card from it. Huh, okay. I found some sort of card where the heart was. Hmm. It says Dan Raymond, private key? Hmm. Why well, isn't that Sir Raymond? Rio hands me the car and I place it into the plastic bag. Uh, because the car is covered in blood, it is difficult to make out what is written on it. I wipe the car that says, Dan Raymond. As I expected, this is Sir Raymond's body. Hmm. So this answers the fact why Sir Raymond was uh, missing. I guess he was dead this entire time or something. Hmm. I mean, I'm still suspicious because the face has been, has been mutilated, so we don't really know who it is. I was thinking it was Jacob, to be honest. But it was a black suit. Jake was wearing like a white suit though. I don't know. But anyway. Or it could be like, it could also potentially be Vincent, you know? Like another like dude basically that kind of fits the bill. But, oh, I don't know. Um, its physique is similar to that of the portrait of him that hangs at the entrance. We can't know for sure, but it's probably him. Maybe the killer wanted us to know who they killed or this could be a trap. The card also says private key. Could this be the key of Sir Raymond's living quarters? I mean, we were trying to hack in there anyway, but I guess you just have the key now. I can't believe that Sir Raymond has been murdered as well. Does this mean that the killer isn't someone from the mansion after all? It's too early to say. Rio, what is the estimated time of death? Let me see. Wait a minute. I'll check the rectal temperature. It should be ready very soon. Rectal temperature? <laughs> isn't that the butt? Uh, I don't know. Actually, I don't know how that works. I don't know. After a while, Rio removes her thermometer from the corpse. The rectal temperature can be a reference of a sigmoid curve that eventually becomes the same as a room temperature. Based on the reading, I would say that he died approximately 12 hours ago. I mean, that was quick. I, I don't know if that's like how fast you could like figure that out, but sure, why not? She's a doctor, you know how it is in every story. Like, she's a doctor, so she just knows literally everything about medical stuff, and she can just do it <laughs> at a snap of a finger. Um, anyway. Uh, basically, I just that approximately 12 hours ago. Hmm. However, because his abdomen has been cut open, there might be some deviations. 12 hours ago. It's 2 p.m. right now, which means he was killed around 2 a.m. So someone asked him to come here around that time. Or maybe even earlier. I remember hearing strange moaning when we arrived at this island. Could that have been Sir Raymond? 
Perhaps he was asked to come here and was captured right after we arrived on the island. Even so, leaving his corpse here after killing him was a very bold move. Perhaps the killer only had time to capture Sir Raymond. Then they came back and tortured him later. But that means anyone could have been the killer, even the guests. However, Sir Raymond knew that there was a traitor in our midst. I don't think it would be easy to kill someone like him. Hey, uh, Ikeda, this is all I can find out but the corpse for now. If you don't mind, i really like to get out of here. Yes, thank you. You've been a great help. However, this means that our situation has gone from bad to worse. I think we should tell everyone else about this. And we have to think about how we should deal with the mansion's staff. Suddenly, the door is unexpectedly pulled open. Okay, Vincent. I, mean, I was thinking about Vincent. I mean, he's not dead, but... We were also very suspicious of him too, right? Because he's the one that pulled away Giselle, at least from what we know. What? Vincent? What? Vincent silently approaches the corpse on the bed and looks at it. I notice that one of his eyebrows is slightly twitching. Without saying a word, Vincent storms out of the room. That gave me a fright. He just barged into the room and there's something strange about him. He didn't even say anything when he saw the body. It was certainly strange. When he saw Sir Raymond's body, he didn't appear to be surprised. I have a really bad feeling about this. Same here. Anyway, let's get out of here for now. This horrible stench will seep into our skins otherwise. You're right. I'll keep this room locked for now. I'm curious about Vincent's actions, but we should all stay silent and remain in our rooms for now. Real, I have a favor to ask. Could you inform everyone about this? Um, yes, alright. And it would be better if you use the internal line. Right now, we still don't know who the killer is. It might even one. Of, uh, it might even be one of the guests. I don't like this one bit. All right, I'll be on my guard. I'll call you later. All right, see you later. <sighs> I guess I should go back to my room as well. Darn, I gave my room key to Neneko. No answer. I guess Neneko is in my room. Could she have gone to Akira's room then? I forget it, I'll just pick the lock. Okay, we'll just do that. Huh? Why my lights on? And why is this a set up to be like a fan service scene where like we walk in on like Neneko naked in the shower? Like I really don't want to see fan service of like a high school girl really to be honest. Especially one that looks very young. I don't know man. Look, this isn't that type of uh, content. Yeah, this isn't the type of content I want to make anyway. I have lights on. What's that sound? I don't I don't want to know. But I have to, I assume. Can I just look at everything else first? Uh, does it come from outside? So where is it coming from? It's totally not the sound of shower or whatever, because she was told to like take a bath, you know, whatever. Uh something unusual I'm here. Nothing unusual would be so far. Nothing unusual my through my three suitcase. I'm not convinced that someone's been inside my room though. Let me see with the bed. Appears to be the start a little bit compared to this morning. Nothing major, though. Drew hasn't called me yet. Investigating the situation is more point of waiting for a call, though. Can I leave? Can I just not? Can I just not? <laughs> okay. Uh. I don't. I don't want to get banned. You know, on YouTube. That's all I'm saying. And Twitch, I guess. The sound appears to be coming from a bathroom. My room doesn't appear to have been vandalized, but I see some strange footprints on the floor. Darn, this isn't good. It must be like a seaweed monster or something. I don't know. Could it be that whoever killed Sir Raymond Thomas is inside my very bathroom? I have a bad feeling about this. That I'm going to go to jail. Holding my gun, I open the bathroom door. Hmm. That sounds louder in here. Sounds like a shower echoing from the bathroom walls. I have a bad feeling about this. I should look around and like totally open the door and like, just freaking see her naked, I guess. I don't know. What about the sink? Hmm, there's some drops of water in here, which means it's been recently used. The question is by whom? Mirror's all steamed up. But the hot water is constantly running to the bathroom. Okay. Who could be inside? I'm just trying really hard to like not click on. <laughs> it's a marble floor. I want to see if there are any footprints, but with this kind of material, you can't really tell. Close basket. There's a bathroom. My silhouette might be visible through the glass. I should enter the bathroom first. Hmm. 
Oh yeah, I, I assume this is like a Japanese style bathroom. By the way, it's a lot different, actually. We're actually like the the bath like the bathtub or whatever is actually kind of part of the the whole bathroom, I guess. You know. Again, I think because the game is made by a Japanese developer. Uh, appears to be time coming in the bathroom. I can't see anything because of the steam. Because someone be taking a bath without my right permission. Nadeko hates baths, so it can't be her. <laughs> Obviously. Besides, after everything that has happened, I can't imagine that a scary cat like her would dare, dare take a bath alone. I don't hear a voice coming from inside. That means that someone isn't just taking a bath, though. Something is definitely strange here. I should inspect my surroundings. Hmm, I kind of did already, though, but... Guess I have to open the bathroom door. However, the door is heavy made of glass. If there's a criminal inside, they may attack me as soon as they notice the door opening. I have to open it carefully to avoid being seen. Okay. Ugh. I crouch, get close to the glass door, and gently pu push the handle. I hope there's a lot of steam because, um... Okay, that was just them. I just, I, I guess they're taking a bath together? I don't know. What the? Then go back here taking a bath together because we have to put the obligatory, like, uh, fan server scene into this visual novel, I guess. I don't know, this is the thing you have to do. Why are they in my bathroom? The Icar may mistake it for her own bathroom. You're also wasting hot water laying around like that. <laughs> okay, I mean, does, does it matter? Who cares about the hot water? You're not paying for it, are you? <laughs> I quietly put the gun safety back on and holster it. But now I'm in an awkward position. I have to get out of here without them noticing or things have become rather complicated. I don't know. It's more strange that I'm like way older than them, you know? Like, the character and also in real life? I don't know, it's just more strange the older that I get. Like, when I'm like the same age as these characters, when I was a kid, it wasn't so bad. But like, now it's just awkward. You know? Nah, whatever. It's just anime, but like, it's part of the culture, really. Part of the subculture, anyway. They always like put fan service scenes of like, the, the characters that you always see that are used as mascots. Really, it's all, it's all a marketing ploy, you know? People always say, you know, sex sells, but that's, that's literally what it is. A lot of visual novels, and I guess this one too, uh, are sold in a way to like obviously market it to a large audience and an easy way to do that is literally clickbait them <laughs> with fan service scenes, right? With, well, not really clickbait, but you know. Uh, how is it trying to move the door? It doesn't seem to budge at all. Why is it stuck? Wait a minute, why am I trying to push a sliding door? Oh, how silly of me. I can close it if I push it hard enough, then that'll make a lot of noise. Hey Neneko, you've been silent for a while now. Why don't you say something? It's not the same thing, I can't talk. Why do you try to relax a little bit? I'm not gonna eat you. Also, you're shaking so much. I could generate electricity from all your shaking. Yeah. My poor Neneko looks like she's in a tough spot. I don't know how they wound up like this, but my Neneko doesn't seem to be enjoying this at all. This is nice. Giselle never wants to take a bath with me. Because that's how it is in, uh, in anime. Actually, I don't know how, uh... Common it is in in, uh, in Japan, but I always I mean obviously I always see it mentioned in anime. They always do the say where they're taking baths together or something. That's just a thing you do with your friends, I guess, in <laughs> your family. I don't know. I, I just don't know how common it actually is, or is it just an excuse to have like the fan service characters do a, a fan service scene? Uh, this is nice. Just never wants to take a bath with me, so I'm glad to get to do this view. It's embarrassing, but I wanted to do this for quite some time. I've been homeschooled since I was young, so I never get to meet girls my own age. Meet girls? <laughs> okay. Your hair is so pretty, your skin is so smooth. You'd be so cute after they're cleaning you from head to toe. I will make a woman out of you. <laughs> okay. You'll make a woman out of me? You've been acting a bit weird, Neneko. Don't worry, I won't bite. Now, don't move too much, I can't wash your back properly. Hey, don't touch me there. <laughs> okay. It, look, it looks like they're having a lot of fun, but there's no time for a thing like that. I need to find a way out of here right now and totally not just keep, like, listening, eavesdropping on them this entire time. Should I close the door or should I leave it open? What should I do? I'm just gonna close the door. When I pull the door, it makes a loud noise. Hey! Hey, sister, will you? That was close. They didn't notice the noise because Neneko shrieked just when I was closing the door. I should make use of this and fully close the door. The phone begins to ring at the worst possible moment. Is that real? Real, please hang up. I'll call you back later. Oh, sounds like the phone's ringing. Huh? Okay, well... I imagine either way, it, like, they would... It would happen the same way anyway. Because if we slowly back away, and then... They'll probably look at this direction anyway as well. Huh. Oh no, they saw me. Um... 
All right, time to do the the anime protagonist things. Be like joke around. All clear. No sign of enemies. <laughs> good, good. I will now proceed to clear the next room. Oh, where could that criminal could have escaped to? I mean, the criminal's right here. The the, the character, your criminal POV. Uh, what? It's just you guys. I'm sorry for interrupting you. Don't mind me. Carry on. Hold it right there. Do you think such a lousy performance could fool us? Hey, Pee Pee Tom, how dare you spy on us while we're bathing? Ha <laughs> ha, typical rom-com anime, like, um, trope, I guess. You, you pervert. It's all a misunderstanding, totally, ha <laughs> ha. I'm totally not, <laughs> the developer did not, like, write this scene in particular, so I'm forced to see this no matter what. Uh, you know, as destined, you know, it's literally destiny. I admit that I was sne uh, sneaking a peek, but I really thought there was an enemy inside the bathroom. Besides, this is my bathroom. Why are you even here? The pervert dares to speak back at me. The door is clearly locked. Why did you try to still come in here? Did you pick it open? You obviously want to smile as you feel he's gone back. Cop between, uh, uh, cop, uh, cop between Scylla and Chardibus. I actually don't know what that means. Is that like Greek mythology or something? Uh, don't look at me. Uh, no way, you got it all wrong. Give me a chance to at least explain. Talk to the hand. I don't want to hear your pervert excuses. Now get the hell out of here. Hey, don't throw water at me. Ow, just popping hot. Oh boy, okay, whatever. <laughs> well, I guess I'm part of the blame. But I didn't intend to spy on them. Why does she believe me? Darn. Darn, I'm totally not a fault for any of this. I just accidentally was a pervert. So I, therefore, I'm not culpable to this crime. <laughs> anyway, I should get out of here ASAP. Who knows what Akira will do to me if I'm still here. And then, you know, what YouTube will do to me if they see this and then ban me. I better get out of here quickly. Good grief. This is not my day. I mean, I think it's fine. Hopefully it's fine. You know, it was censored. But <laughs> it, it's so obviously meant to be, you know, again, fan service. But uh, I don't know. Uh, well, I'm soaking wet as well. Did she hang up the phone? Well, she probably tried to call me again soon. You know, that was a so seriously bad timing. Oh, the phone is ringing again. I think she finally finished telling all the guests. Ryo, is that you? I don't have much time. I'll talk quickly. The voice at the other end sounds strange. It is too distorted so that I can't make out the identity of the caller, even if it's a man or a woman. Okay. So I guess they're using the filter somehow? Who is this? It doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, or something. I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I heard that Sir Raymond is dead. Be very careful. As the administrator of this facility, Sir Raymond was the only one who held everyone in place. Some of the people from the mansion will start doing bad things if they find out that he's gone. The administrator. Who are you? Are you one of the guests? Or are you someone from the mansion? I can tell you that I was covertly investigating the truth about this island for an organization. That's all I can say. Now just like you, I'm in immediate, uh, imminent danger. I can no longer conceal myself. I was hoping to exchange information with you as much as possible so that we can overcome this situation together. This is why I made contact with you. I see. So you're a CIA agent or something like that? It's inconvenient that I don't know your name. A cold name is fine. What do I call you? Hmm. You can call me Wizards. Wizards of the Coast. Wizards? Alright, Wizards. I have a few questions I would like to ask of you. Alright. Talking to... Or talk to the wizards. Good. About the killer. Do you have any idea who killed Thomas and Sir Raymond? The same person probably killed them. The killer is most likely one of the guests, not someone from the mansion. Huh? Jacob says something similar. How do you know that? The people on this island are using operatives from different agencies to monitor each other. If someone had made any suspicious moves, it would have been detected immediately. It's not easy to do anything with so many eyes watching your every move. Therefore, it's more likely that the killer is one of the guests. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so, okay, all this, okay, that's just the, the staff are like, be monitored themselves, you know, so they can't do anything is the idea. Hmm. I mean, basically just to home in the fact, uh, you know. That it's one of the guests, basically. Not one of the... Not background characters that we never see, basically. I see. But Sir Raymond was a pretty cautious man. He sent out invitations to several people to flush the traitor out. 
I don't think that it could be so easy to kill that kind of person. Perhaps one of them found a way to outsmart them, or outsmart him. Is it possible that someone from the mansion is helping the killer? It is possible. Sir Raymond stood in the way of those who would want to use the island's research for their own purposes. Some people from the mansion could have been secretly colluding with the killer because of the alignment of interests. Hmm. If so, do the mansion staff know who the killer is? I'm not sure. But now that Sir Raymond's murder has been discovered, the killer has outlived their usefulness. If someone from the mansion were behind all of this, they would now eliminate the killer without hesitation. Of course, if the killer has a way to bargain for their life, that would change things. The killer was clever enough to manage to kill Sir Raymond. He or she most likely has a bargaining chip. I don't know what it could be though. It's ironic, but the killer may be our lifeline right now. So you're saying that our lives are now the hands of a killer? Isn't that ironic? Considering how Thomas and Sir Raymond were killed, I can say the killer harbored a grudge against them so much. What are your thoughts on that? Hmm. This island was not just a base for prostitution, but the organ trade as well. This was extremely inhumane as people were used for parts, you know, you might as well recycle. You might, you know, you, if you're like already incredibly a horrible person uh, and like done horrible things, you know, you might as well recycle the body parts, I guess. I don't know, anyway. Although the victims do not survive, the killer is likely someone connected to them. Or, or although this is unlikely, a client could have been driven mad by remorse. Organ trade. That's horrible. In any case, this is my educated guess about the killer. The trading of organs and prostitution are certainly inhumane, but they are only a part of the island's secret. The island was originally intended to be used for something else. Something else. Hmm. Well, I would like to know more about Sir Raymond. What was his, what was his role on this island? Sir Raymond was a millionaire who was one of the facility's founders. He was responsible for planning the project. He was also the administrator who had jurisdiction over the island itself. Jurisdiction over the island. He was responsible for the many inhumane things that went on this island. The facilities of this island were controlled and monitored by him. However, it, was, it is just an ostensible side. It is said that some government agencies were involved in the management of this place. Government involvement, huh? That's why Sir Raymond was so important to the agencies. If they knew he, that he was killed, the agencies would not remain silent. But we can't make contact with them until the ship returns. Indeed, that's our current situation. It will likely take some time before the agencies realize what has happened. They will not make a move until then. Does that mean the killer has free reign until they are unmasked? Indeed. If any insiders from the mansion are assisting the killer, we could be in grave danger. We have to be on our guard. Betrayers might liquidate all of us to make their way easier. Oh, isn't that just great? Be careful, Ikira. Things might have already become extremely dangerous. Well, how about more about Sir Raymond? Unfortunately, I've already told you everything I know. What I'm worried about now is whether his subordinates were really loyal to him or not. This is my intuition speaking, but there's something off about Vincent. Could he be the one pulling the strings behind the scenes? It would be rather bad if he was our enemy. Hmm. Nothing to say about that. <laughs> what about the secret of this island? So will you tell me now? What is happening on Shiro Nagasu Island? Alright. Prostitution, organ trade. All of these things that have been taking place on Shiro Nagasu Island were just secondary activities. The real purpose of this island is the development of biological weapons. Of course it is. Of course it is. Yes. Biological weapons. Well, I was gonna say Metal Gear, but no, Metal Gear isn't a biological weapon, though. It's a bipedal weapon, but anyway. Biological weapons. Biological weapons. Metal Gear. On such a remote island in the ocean. On such a remote island in the ocean. You know about Guantan uh, Guantanamo Bay, don't you? Oh, of course. It's a U.S. military base built on a leasehold in Cuba. It's a black site where national and international laws do not apply. There was a lot of outrage when terrorists imprisoned there were tortured. What about it? Most developed countries have human humanitarian hum, I can't speak, have humanitarian hum, humanitarian humanitarian humanit I don't know how to say that. Uh, humanit humanitarian 
humanitarian. I feel like I'm saying that wrong, but anyway, humanita humanitarian frameworks that they adhere to. So as a result of that, they have many restrictions in place. Humanitarian. I don't know why I'm. I feel like I'm saying that wrong. I'm gonna like I'm because I'm so stuck on that. I I want I need to like know how to pronounce this. I'm gonna search it on Google and humanitarian. 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 Okay, humanitarian. Because you want to say human, right? Because it's like human, but it's not human. You say humanitarian. Humanitarian frameworks. Anyway. Uh, they have restrictions, but sometimes a nation needs to do something that runs counter to its laws. Guantan uh, Guantanamo is a good example of that. Some less scrupulous countries have carried out several invasions and have developed weapons without needing to adhere to humanitarian values. By doing so, they are eroding the position of countries that do strictly uphold humanitarian laws. Shiranagasu Island was set up as a way to bypass such humanitarian laws. This is the second black site built by the organization. A black site for the development of biological weapons. It goes against any humanitarian progress made in the last uh, decennia. Decennia? Decennia? What's a decennia? I don't know what that means. I assume the last decade? Maybe or last... I don't know. I mean, last century? Actually, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look that up, actually. Decennia? What's decennia? It's a strange way I've never seen before. Yeah, it's just a decade. Okay, it just means decade. Decennium. This decennium, decennia. It just means decades. Okay. But not quite. The island is a necessary evil because it fills a need. At least that's how they justify it. I see. So what kind of biological weapons are they developing? Unfortunately, I haven't discovered that yet. However, it appears to be a kind of research that requires a lot of human test subjects. Customized virus development or a kind of genetic uh, manipulation of the human body itself. Yes. You know, human experimentation, it's happened before, you know, especially during, I believe, World War II, you know, let's just say. But anyway, I see. Well, it looks like it would be a tough problem to deal with in any case. So what do you want me to do? I want you to discover what the weapon is and, if possible, prevent it from falling into the hands of the people from the mansion. It could even be something as powerful as the nuclear weapons used during the Second World War. We must stop it from falling to the hands of an egotistical person at all costs. Well, wow, this is pretty alarming. Also, my chair uh, keeps like it has this weird thing where the chair kind of like it can, it can like um, I don't know what the word is. Bend? That's not the right word. <laughs> but the, the chair, the seat of my chair can like recline, I guess, but I don't want it to recline. And sometimes the, the like, it's, it's not, it's not a very good chair to be honest. It's a very inexpensive chair, but it has this ability to, re to recline, but then there's this like little bar that prevents it from reclining. It co sometimes comes out and I suddenly just like <laughs> recline, but I don't want it to recline. Anyway, all of this is pretty alarming. Not the reclining thing, but you know, the human trafficking, the organ trade, human experimentation, biological weapons. That's the thing that's pretty alarming. And you're telling me to handle that all by myself. That's crazy. If we can get our hands on the weapon first, they won't be able to do anything to us. You can think of it as a kind of life insurance. I suddenly hear static coming from the phone. It seems that our time is up. I'll be in touch again soon. Hey, wait. Darn, they hung up. I wanted to ask about some more things, but oh well, I still got a lot of information, got a lot of exposition. If all of this is correct, we might not live to see another day unless I do something about it. Guess I'll have to do some hardcore investigating now. You know, now it's hardcore. Before it was just softcore, now it's hardcore investigating. Perhaps I can also find a hidden communication device somewhere. I'm also worried about this biological weapon. If the people from this mansion are planning to use it, they'll have to be stopped. We'll just have to save the world, you know, while we're at it. Ah. Hello? Oh, and you finally pick up the phone. Hey, what's going on? Is everything all right? I was worried something happened because your lines was busy for a while. Hi, Rail. No, I'm fine. No problem. Have you been in touch with the other guests? Not quite. I can't get in touch with Nariko and Akira. Would you happen to know where they are? Ah, they're all right. Those brats through hot water. Uh, never mind. They're in my room. Oh, that's a relief. I want to tell Rio about the conversation I just had, but... It's too dangerous to talk about it on the phone. I should keep this quiet for now. 
We should be on our guard. We should stay together in a single place as much as possible. And we shouldn't trust the people from the mansion anymore. I think you're right. But there's nowhere else we can go on this isolated island. Yes, we're in a tough spot. We have to play the cards we are dealt, whatever that means. I'll be in touch once I've taken care of things on my end. Be careful. You too, Ryo. The card that was left inside the cards by the killer. What is it left there to send me a message or is it a trap? Alright, I guess I'll just have to accept their invitation. Oh, you're still here, you pervert. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I've, I, you know, it's funny when Akira calls the player a pervert or something. I really do feel that's just the developer, you know, reflecting that on themselves, I feel like. Because they're the ones that drew it. But... <laughs> what is that bloodstained card? Why do you have such a thing? Ew, gross. Neneko, Akira, listen to me carefully. Sir Raymond is dead. We just found out that he has been murdered. It appears that he was already dead around 2 a.m. Sir Raymond has been murdered. Uh, you're only making things up, hoping that we'll forget about early, you scumbag. This is not a joke. There was a vacant room on the first floor, room 104. Or 104, no, room 105. We found Sir Raymond's dead body in there. It likely is the handiwork of the same person who killed Thomas. Was that a dead body after all? I'm glad I didn't have to see it. And apparently the mansion staff can't be trusted either. I tell them what wizards told me earlier. The development of biological weapons. This is the first time I've heard about that. The car was hidden inside Sir Raymond's body. This might be the key to his living quarters. I'm going to use this to sneak into Sir Raymond's living quarters. You really need to do that? And besides, it feels like it might be a trap. Again, <laughs> you know, it's like... Constantly, we go to like, we're invited to certain places just, just to get killed. If we do nothing, things will get really bad. Even if it's dangerous, I still have to go. Neneko, Akira. It would be best if you stay together with everyone else in the same place. You should also gather some food if you can. You make it sound, you make it sound as if there's nothing to be worried about. I'll be back. Keep an eye out for danger. Oh, wait a minute. Neneko has me a device that looks like a smartphone. I've modified this so that it can be used on this island. You probably can use it for sending and receiving calls and messages to my personal 110 <laughs> by the window. The device erases all messages after a set period of time, so any secret information can be... Uh, oh. I feel like that was skipped. Uh, weird. I imagine she said, like, so any secret information can be sent, or whatever, you know. I don't know why that, I guess, maybe a typo or accidentally deleted uh, in the script. Anyway, uh, that's very helpful. That, that This should come in handy, the Nico. Oops, like, again, every time I go in the log and I go back and I, I press space, it, it does that. I guess it goes to skip for some reason. I don't know, anyway. Uh, 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 oh, and I, I actually skipped the dialogue too. Um, that should, that should come in handy, the Nico. Uh, I think it would take some time. Oh, no, it's right here. I think it would take some more time to analyze Thomas's card. Iki, Ikeda. Oh. Stop it. Stop. I, I keep. I get, it keeps defaulting to that when I press space after using the log. Anyway, Neneko, I appreciate that, but I can't allow you to come with me. Your strength is not physical, but mental. You you know, you're like a, uh, like a wizard build or you know, whatever. You're like a mage build. Use your brain to help everyone as much as possible. Use your big, you use your giant big brain. Don't talk to me as if you're going to die. Akira, look after Neneko. Uh, sure. You don't need to tell me that. Um, you spying on us? I'll let it slide for now. You know, because that was just meant to be just comic relief, I guess. Perverted comic relief. Again, it's just a thing in anime. <laughs> be careful, Ikeda. Alright, I'll see you later. Alright, I should be ready for whatever happens next. If I don't do anything, then Nico and the others will be in danger. As Wizard said, I need to take the initiative. No regrets, whatever happens. That's how I always lived. Looks like I'll have the chance to prove myself again. Here goes nothing. As I transition to this elevator. Whoa. And the elevator is working this time. You know, before it wasn't, now it conveniently works. Yeah, I mean, it says right here. Strange. The elevator was out of order earlier. It's working fine now. Alright, let's get this over with. Not gonna question that. I mean, kind of question it, but... It probably has something to do with the murder. Oh, and a little jump scare there. That actually got me a little bit. <laughs> of course. God damn it. 
Of course. Demons. It's random demons. There's lots of demons just running around this house. Darn, what a situation. I have a nagging feeling that something really bad is about to happen. I guess Ikeda didn't see that, but we did. I need to get on top of this as quickly as possible. Now let's see. Will this car work or not? Bingo. It, un it unlocked the door. So this really is the car key to Sir Raymond's living quarters. Alright, there's no time to waste. Let's take a look inside. Hmm. This appears to be the living room. It leads to another room. As far as I can see, this room doesn't appear to be very important. Although I have a feeling that there's something strange about it. No, I shouldn't look into things into little things right now. I shouldn't look into little things right now. I need to keep Neneko and the others safe from the killer first. I'll open the door over there. Okay. What? You've got to be kidding me. What the hell is going on? This room appears to be the carbon copy of Roy Higgins' study. Why is this here, this mansion? Am I hallucinating? I wish Neneko was here. Uh, well, I guess I'll need to investigate this room with my detective powers. My super detective powers. Alright. Can you spot the difference? I mean, this seems different, by the way. For some reason, that eerie painting is upside down. Somehow, this makes the painting even eerier. But why? What does this mean? This is so weird. There's a note on the desk. Card lost. OOL3C. What does this mean? It appears to be some kind of code, but Neneko might be able to make more sense of this. Nothing unusual about the photographs. It's so strange. They are the same ones as those in Roy Higgins' study. Nothing unusual about the chandelier. The fact that this room even exists is bizarre, though. It's as if the developer copy and pasted, you know, the same uh, background in this situation. The light switch doesn't appear to work either. Nothing unusual about this floor. The place itself is surreal, though. The chair has been moving exactly the same way. That can't be a coincidence. Even if Roy Higgins somehow made an exact copy of Sir Raymond's study, realistically, this should not be possible. I don't see the five towns outside the window, but the illusion sky and sea instead. It's so strange. The scenery feels unreal somehow. There doesn't seem to be anything unusual about the bookshelf. Strangely, it looks exactly the same. Why is it a copy of the one in Roy Higgins' study? Nanako might have noticed any differences. Hmm. Strange to be identical to the one in Roy Higgins' study. Something wrong about it. Nothing unusual about the lights. The lights. Hmm. What is this place? I know. I'll send her this code of the device she gave me. Perhaps she can make more sense of this. Now, what was that code again? Well, ever since I entered this room, I haven't, been able to I haven't been able to think straight. All I have to do is look at the note in front of me. Guard post OOP3G. Huh? Was this the code? I thought it was different. What should I do? Should I sh send this code or... Uh, 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 uh. Send previous code. Wait. It's definitely different from the code I saw before. I have a gut feeling that I should send the old code. The code I saw earlier must have been card loss OOL3C. I'll send her that code. Uh, I use the device and send Nanako the code. Alright. Um, I feel as if something strange is happening right now. Is it just my imagination? Hmm. Strange. I wonder what happens if I... Well, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Hmm. Something is not right. This situation is too unusual. I should check in with Nanako again. Ah, looks like she sent me a reply. Uh, what is this gibberish? Is there a connection issue? Or is it one of Nanako's weird pranks? Oh, what's happening? Don't know what's happening to me? I can no longer read the letters. My left brain half must be under the influence of something. There are hallucinogens in this room. I have to get out of here quickly. Okay. I mean, it's like a dream, you know, where you're like... You can't read the, the words in the book. Isn't, isn't that like a, a myth? Or, well, 
maybe not a myth, but like, yes, people always say that you can't, when you're looking in a dream, you try to read something, it's all gibberish. I find that not always to be true, though. It depends. Sometimes I can read stuff, you know, in my dream. But, you know, I mean, especially like sometimes I dream of like just surfing. Because, okay, my, my dreams sometimes are just very mundane. But sometimes I just dream of like, you know, just surfing the internet. And I just read stuff on my computer, basically. It's, it's like, you can read stuff. It's just, um, sometimes it doesn't make sense. But anyway. My vision is blurry. Oh, and I can't move. They got me. Neneko, uh, uh, dead. End of the second phase. Proceed to the third phase. Chemical administration. NIRS uh, rescan start. Stim receiver in operation. Access the memory area and start scanning. Commence play at 10 a.m. July 24th. Warning. Voltage abnormality detected in system C5. Third phase progress has been interrupted. Disconnected from the subject. Switch to safe mode. System reboot. System check started. Will complete in 5 minutes and 28 seconds. What? Where am I? What happened? Darn, I feel like someone hit me in the head with a shovel. How long was I out? Uh, you finally woke up. You could, uh... Neneko, where are we? What's going on? That thing killed everyone. Everyone is dead. I'm the only one who managed to make it here. Ikuda, I managed to break into the system and pause the program, but I think it'll restart eventually. I tried to remove your restraints, but I couldn't. I'm not strong enough. Killed? By a thing? I don't know what it was. It could have been the demon of Shiro Nagasu Island. The demon of Shiro Nagasu Island? That creature? I wonder if it's the biological weapon that was being developed on this island. Uh, darn, I can't move. Ikura, the person from the memory appeared to be trying to extract something out of your memory. A memory from the past. And they're replaying your memories of July 24th as if it's real, but it's all fake. Don't let them fool you. If you somehow manage to re realize that it's fake, you might be able to regain consciousness. Fake? What I've been experiencing just now was a memory that was being replayed? July 24. What could they be looking for? Suddenly, something that sounds like a scream can be heard. Neneko is shaking all over. It's here. What do we do? If we don't do anything, it will come in here. Neneko is shaking. She thinks for a while. Eventually, she smiles me wryly. Ikeda. My life hasn't really been that great. It's been more unpleasant than fun. But still, I had a lot of fun when I was here. Remember that time you walked into me when I was naked and you, you know, sexually harassed me like so many times? Uh, Hang on, Neneko, what are you saying? What are you gonna do? The door lock system's only connected on the outside. So this room can only be locked from the outside. Um, again, <laughs> like another door that's only been locked by the outside, by the way. I mean, I, I mean, maybe in this case it makes sense. It's kind of like a prison, right? So maybe, I mean, in this situation it makes sense. The the one we saw in the communication room, though, about the snake, right? That, that didn't make any sense to me, but anyway. Uh, there's another kind of outside, so this room can only be locked from the outside. Uh, Ikeda. This is probably the end, so I'll just say it. I love you. Even though, even though you, this is like, I don't know, it's a little creepy. This is like way younger than, than Ikeda, but anyway. But I don't know, I don't really know what Ikeda's real age is though. I just assume he's middle age. Maybe he's not that much older, but I don't know, anyway. I'm just assuming. But, you know, someone's like a private detective, like, has like connections to the mafia, right, and everything. I mean, come on, it sounds like someone who's older. But maybe, but maybe they're like, I don't know, 16 as well. Yeah, maybe they are teenagers as well. I don't know, anyway, probably not. Uh, wait, Neneko, don't go. I could also be, you know, I, I'm also maybe misinterpreted as maybe not, it's maybe not romantic. It could also be just, uh, platonic love, right? Anyway, don't go. Neneko staggers to her feet and opens the door. A few moments later, I heard a sound of a lock closing. Why can't I remove these restraints? Neneko, wait, I'm coming. I can hear the howl of the monster again outside the door, then a dull sound as if something is crushed. No! Neneko! System check complete. No voltage abnormalities. Restarting the third phase. Chemical administration. NIRS rescan start. Stim receiver in operation. Access memory area commence scanning. Commence play from 10am on July 24. 
And then Ako, you silly girl, you're you're always so timid. How could you sacrifice yourself for my sake? Lenico, please, tell me it isn't true. A drug is injected by a needle in my vein, and a cold sensation spreads through my arm. No, I'm losing consciousness. Will I experience that day all over again? This world, could it be for real? Ugh. Okay. I mean, that's a big reveal, I guess, where everything is actually fake. I mean, it was foreshadowing the very beginning. Uh, where we saw the sign boy in the airport. That was strange, and, you know, every time we die as well, it kind of restarts too. So, like, yeah, so this is basically all simulation. It's a, it's a game, inside a game, you see. But it's, it seems like in real life, though, in the present time, you know, kind of like a... Kind of like a movie technique. What is it called? I always forget what it's called. Um, in media res or something, you know, where like, it just skips to, like, the very end. And then, you know, and then we go back again, so you like, you wonder what happened, right? But, anyway. Up, oh, wake up. If you don't, things will get worse. We're running out of time. This world will be... Please wake up, please. Ikuda. Send Ikuda. Oh. We're back here. Nani? Was I dreaming? When did I fall asleep? What a strange dream. I felt as if something was very urgent. Maybe I'm just tired. I'm working much too hard. Anyway, she's not thinking about work. Guess I'll have to go look for her. Alright. Hmm. Does it just restart from here? Yeah, that, that's, that's interesting. I wonder if... Uh, yeah, this world is now real. What? Maybe this world is really easy. What am I thinking? Hmm. Who am I supposed to meet again? I can't remember. Who do I have to meet? Why am I here? This world is not... Ugh. Is what is that an end? Is that like what? <laughs> okay, I was wondering if we're gonna. Hmm. I don't know. Here's the cast, by the way, of these fictional characters. <sighs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Is well, I mean, that's an end. That's a ending. I don't know if that's the right ending. Um, I'm not sure. Well, how do you? How how would you? Avoid that, I wonder. I'm not sure. I have to experiment a little. I'm trying to think like any are there any decisions I could have made that would have been that would have affected this? I mean there was definitely the one uh where we look we saw the cold and everything, right? But I'm not sure that if that would have affected the ending or is it something else? I'm not sure. Oh, I kinda skipped that actually. I just skipped that. I mean, I mean come on. We're we're not done yet. Yeah, dead end. There we go. It's just a dead end. Interesting. Cause that's what happens when I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what decisions really affected that. But the idea is that you learn about the fact that the world isn't real, and you're just in a cycle. I guess an infinite cycle. And someone is, you know, is trying to extract those memories to figure out something. I guess. And I don't know in the present time if we're still in that mansion, but. Well, let's reload, I guess.